What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Twin Motion tutorial for you. So in this video we're continuing our series on using Twin Motion to create renderings. So up to this point we've talked about how to create different kinds of renderings. In this video I wanted to talk about how to create animations and then export those videos inside of Twin Motion. This video is part of a series that's being made in a partnership with Epic Games and one of the reasons that I'm making the series right now is that Twin Motion is free to download through the end of the month. So if you download a copy of Twin Motion right now, you get to keep that version that you download. So I'm trying to get the word out so that you can download this while it's still available for free. Um, it's really great to have access to a real-time rendering program for free. It's a great place for people to start, and I want to make sure you know about it while there's still time. So if you want to download this, there's a link to it in the notes down below that you can use to get to that download. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I thought that a good way to demonstrate some of the animation capabilities of Twin Motion would be to start by downloading um, some geographical context into this rendering. So what I want to do is I want to click on the button for Urban in my new view, and I want to click on the button for Context. And so when you click on the button for Context, there's an option down here where you can actually download geographical context for a certain area. And so what that's going to do, and I'm just going to do a search for Denver. Colorado, that's going to allow you to use OpenStreetMap to bring in geographical context. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find a location that we want to download. So let's see, maybe like this corner or something like that. And you're just going to click on this button for grab. And so the grab is going to give you um, the grab is going to give you the box for the area that you can bring in. And I'm not 100% sure if this box is supposed to be adjustable. It's not adjusting in here, so you may just have to kind of fit your map to that location. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a certain location, maybe like this one, and I'm just going to click on the button for grab. And so what that's going to do is that's going to download that geographical context, and it's going to use it to generate roads and trees and buildings, a lot of things having to do with that location. And so depending on the size of the area that you're bringing in, this may take you a little while. But this is going to bring this in and this is going to build an actual city for you just by clicking that grab button. And so one thing you may want to consider when you do this is because this brings in a lot of area, it can take a little while to fly around in here. So what I would recommend is setting your uh, speed settings over here to something faster like the car so that you're at drive speed instead of walking speed. That'll just make this a lot faster um, when you're flying around in this city. And this didn't even, I, I guess I missed some of the high rises and taller buildings inside of downtown. So I may do this again um, just to get a different area that's in here. So I'm going to redo this and then we'll come back and I'll start talking about how to create animations inside of Twin Motion. All right, so I've gone, gone back and rerun this, and honestly, this may have been a little bit of overkill because I got a lot of extra buildings back in here, but I did get uh, the downtown area as well. And so what I want to do is I want to use this geographical context area, and I want to create an animation in downtown. So let's go ahead and create an animation over here. So this is about where the downtown convention center is inside of Denver. You can see how there's some interesting stuff that gets brought in um, whenever uh, you bring in your OpenStreetMap data. So this is a little bit interesting because it actually generates all of this as its own geometry. So you can see how what's happening is I've got some geometry in here that's like over my roads. So I might come in here and make some minor adjustments. So things like moving this green area down a little bit. So nothing big but just enough that it's kind of below the road. So I'm moving this down to like negative 0.1 or something like that. You can see how now it's not going over the road. But what I want to do is I want to create some cars driving down this road. And so Twin Motion has tools built in in order to do this. So if you click in the urban settings, there's an option in here for paths. And so paths is what you're going to use in order to create different uh, animations or movements inside of Twin Motion. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to create a path along which things are animated. So for example, let's say that we wanted some cars driving down this road right here this way. So what you would do is you would click on the button for vehicle path, then you would click on this button right here to add a path. Then all you do is you just come in here and you just click. So you can see I'm clicking multiple different times and I'm just creating a path that runs along this road. And so what this is going to do when I do that is that's going to animate cars 
driving down this road. So I'll go ahead and click that to about right here and then I'm just gonna right click in order to place that path. And so now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that cars are now being animated along this path. So you can use this to automatically add cars into your rendering. So you can see how these cars are driving up the road and you also get a number of different options at the bottom of the page for what you can have those cars do. So for example, you can adjust this so that there's multiple different lanes of traffic if you want to do that. So if you want multiple different cars driving down this road, like if you wanted this to be three lanes, for example, you could set this to be three lanes. So alternatively, if you just wanted this, if you wanted this to have cars going both directions, you could click on the button for two lanes. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna to take the number of lanes that you have in here, whatever that might be, and uh, that's gonna create that number of lanes going in both directions. But you can see how this is automatically animating these in. And the nice thing about the vehicles in here is if you look at them, the wheels are actually turning in these cars. So it's actually animating the turning of the wheels as it goes. And so you can also adjust the speed of the cars. And one thing I may do is I may drag this into the middle of the road a little bit more. So that's the nice thing about the paths is that they're easily editable over here. So if I click on this path, for example, I can actually click and move these little dots in order to place those wherever I want them to be. So I can set this so that my traffic is actually in the middle of this road because I didn't really set it up that way before. But let's say I set this up this way. Now I've got two lanes of traffic going both ways here. And really what I want is I want this to be one lane or one direction with three lanes of traffic. And so you can set this up so that those three lanes of traffic are animated in here. You can also adjust the speed of these cars. So if you wanted them to be going a little bit faster, like 35 miles an hour or really whatever, um, you can adjust that using this slider right here. And you can also set um, if traffic drives on the right side of the road or the left side of the road. And you can reverse that direction. So you can add cars using this path, you can also add people walking down the side of the road using this path as well. So, um, or a path. So what you do if you want people walking down the road is you click on the button for character path. And so you can use this to add a path along which people are going to walk. So like for example, if I want people to walk down this road, like this was a sidewalk or something, um, I would go ahead and I would set this just like this. So you can see how I'm just kind of setting this so that people are gonna walk down the side of the road. And so you do need to be a little bit careful. You don't want your people to be straying out in the middle of the road. So one of the things you can do is you can click on these little plus buttons in order to add points. So when you add points, you can use this to more finely adjust um, where the people are going to walk. So I can move this up here and then just add another point in order to kind of dictate where they're walking and the direction that they're walking. So you can see how you can easily animate these people walking along a path. So with the people walking, you can adjust like the kind of clothes that they're wearing. So you can adjust this based on your setting. You can set the different type of people that are gonna be in here based on your geographical location, as well as setting things like if you want them to be dressed up like they're gonna be working at an office, or if they're to travel or something like that, you can see how you can set this so that people are like rolling um, suitcases and other things like that. You can also set them for beach attire. So if they're out, for the beach, you could set clothing there. And then there's also an option for traditional Middle Eastern clothing. So lots of different options in here for the kind of people that are walking through your scene that allows you to adjust this um, so that you get kind of the look that you're going for in here. And same thing, you can set the width of the path that they're walking. So you could like set this way wide and then people are kind of spread out a little bit further. Or you could also keep that really narrow. And you can also adjust the density or number of people that are walking along this path. So depending on what you're trying to do, you can adjust that here as well. And you can set this so that they're walking or standing. And then there's also an option in here with your paths to create bicycles. So if you want people riding bikes down the road, you can set that. And then a custom path allows you to animate custom objects along a path that you select. So if you want to animate other things that are moving, you can use this to do that. So like for example, and I don't know if this is gonna be the best example, but we'll try it anyway. Let's say that we wanted to 
add a dog running around in the park right here. You can see how right now what this has is this has a custom option moving along this path. Well, um, what you could do is you could go into your uh, model library and under characters, let's say you had like this dog right here. You could drag this dog onto this point and then this dog would now be what's moving along this path. Now the problem with this dog model is it doesn't actually move like it's running. So because of that, it may be better to use this for things like vehicles, like for example, if you had like a boat or something like that, you know, this is really good for a boat because a boat just has to move, right? It doesn't actually have to, uh, a boat doesn't actually have to do anything other than move around. So it doesn't need any additional animations in here, but you can use this setting in order to animate custom objects along a path. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this path out. And so now we have this set up where we've got cars driving down the road and we've got people walking down the road as well. And so now let's just create a quick animation using these settings. So in order to create an animation, you're just gonna do the same thing as if you were creating a still image. You're gonna come down here into the media section. And in the media section, you're gonna click on this button right here. And instead of going to image, which is how we've set up our image export in the past, instead you would set up video. So for a video, you would click on the button for video and then you click on the button for create. And so within create, you're just gonna click on the button for create clip. So a clip is just gonna be a short little piece of video that you create and you dictate the settings for. And uh, in the same way that you uh, set your different images inside of still image creation mode, over here, you set things like your camera settings and your weather and stuff like that using this setting. So like for example, let's say we wanted this to be a little cloudy, maybe not quite so wet, but let's say we wanted this to be kind of a cloudy day like this one, you would set this weather inside of the clip settings. So you would also adjust your lighting this way. So if you wanted your ambient light to be a little brighter, maybe your sun to be a little bit brighter as well, you would adjust all of those settings inside of your lighting as well. And so what we've done is right now we've created a clip right here with a duration of 10 seconds that would just export an animation based on this clip. Well, let's say we wanted this to kind of orbit around and we wanted our camera view to fly up a little bit, like maybe not through the tree, but maybe we wanted this to orbit kind of this way while still keeping an idea or a look at this building right here. Well, what you would do is you would move your camera and then you would click this plus button. So when you click the plus button, what that's gonna do is that that's going to um, create a second camera location. So now, if I was to click the play button, you can see how this is gonna animate a transition over 10 seconds of a transition between this camera view and this camera view. So this clip would be 10 seconds long right here. And so we could do this for multiple different views. So for example, let's say we wanted to add a second clip. What we would do is we would take this clip and we would set this up Maybe somewhere like right, let's say we wanted some like follow along drone footage here of our cars. So what we would do is we would set our clip up here and we would go ahead and we would refresh this to update our camera location. And then for our second clip, we would set that to be right here. So now what we have is we have another 10 second long clip where our camera flies along with our cars. So we can use this in order to animate our camera transition with these cars right here. And so you can also set this to have a different time of day. So let's say for example that you wanted your clip right here to be earlier in the day and then this one to be later in the day. Well now, when we click the play button to show this, you're actually gonna get a time transition of morning to afternoon inside of this uh, clip. So you can use this to create different time effects and other things like that as well when you're creating your clips. And so then from here, you can either take these clips that you have inside of your video and you can export them individually. So if you click over here under your video and you see you have options in here for clips, well, I also have an option in here for a movie. So you could animate 
animate each one of those clips individually if you wanted to or render them individually or there's a button over here for edit and so when you mouse over that that gives you the option for create movie and so what that's going to do is that's going to give you the ability to take your different clips and it's going to give you the ability to put them together into a movie so for example let's say that i wanted a a video or a movie where I had this lower camera view and then another one where it transitions into my other camera view. So you can see how what I can do is I can drag that over here and I can set the transitions between those scenes. So for example, if I was to come in here and set this so that I have this transition in here, you have an option for a white fade or a black fade. And so when you click on this, what this is, or when you add this, what this is going to do is this is going to give you a transition in between your different clips. So you can see how what that did is that one gave us a dark fade. Or if we click over here, do the same thing, then we'll get a light fade between our different clips. So you can use this to set that transition in here. I don't know that you can adjust the length of that transition. Um, I have not been able to do that, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think that you can. And so you can see how you can use this to create longer movies with different clips coming together. So just remember you set your effects inside your clips and then you use movies to combine your different clips together. And so when you're done with this and you want to export your actual rendered video, what you do is you just do the same thing we did before where we go down here to our video and we just uh, select the object or the video that we want to render. So in this case, this would be movie zero one. And uh, just remember that the longer your movie is, the more frames this is going to have to put in here. You can set the format of the different clips in here as well as the number of frames that are going to be created. Just remember more frames equals more things that this has to render. Then you can also set the different modes in here. Um, I'm just going to leave this on standard. We can talk a little bit more about 360 and stuff like that a little bit later. Um, and then we can also set if this is going to have our max lighting settings and our max reflection settings on. And so once we've done this, we can go ahead and we can click on the button for start export. And so what this is going to do is this is going to render out every single clip contained in here. And so since this is a 20 second video, you can do some math and figure out that with a 20 second video at 25 frames per second, that means this is going to have to come in here and this is going to have to render out 500 different frames. So just be aware when you're exporting video that this can take a little while to do. So make sure that you have enough time, but also just uh, be aware and uh, try not to render more than you need to because your render times can get pretty significant on something like this. So I'm just gonna let this render out, and then once it does that, we're gonna go ahead and we'll take a look at our result to see what we've generated. All right, and so once your video is rendered, if you come in here and play it, you can see how this gives you an actual video scene that's been rendered out with your different clips in here. And this went really fast for me because I kept this very simple. I don't have a bunch of complex reflections or anything like that because I just wanted to demonstrate how to export a simple rendered image or rendered video from Twin Motion. But you can take this and you can apply all of your different materials, add a whole bunch more context um, in here as well. But creating or video creation is fairly easy using Twin Motion's tools. So I'm fairly happy with this result, even though I just kind of came in here and did a really quick rendering just to give you an example of how this works. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you been making videos with Twin Motion? How do you feel about it so far? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.